M. O. Ling said to Su Kinju, I regret agreeing to draw a clear line with you back then, but it wasn't to make you suffer, it was to make it easier for you when facing Fan Yongzi. Su Kinju replied, Thank you for your concern, Mr. M. O. I haven't suffered any grievances. Su Wei was deep in thought. Xiao Pang asked him, What's wrong? He replied, I ran into Fang Qi's ex husband. Xiao Pang said, It's just an ex husband, what's there to be anxious about? Su Wei said, It's not about her ex husband. It's because she is very sad, as she's about to get married after seeing her ex husband. Xiao Pang said, Isn't this a great opportunity? If you give her more warmth at this time, you could win her heart, couldn't you? Su Wei said that Xiao Pang was encouraging him to take advantage of someone in a vulnerable state and wanted to teach Xiao Pang a lesson. Just then, Fang Qi came to Su Wei, wanting to practice how to be more charming on a blind date. Upon learning this, Su Wei strongly opposed Fang Qi going on any more blind dates and believed that Fang Qi shouldn't be stubbornly going on blind dates just to spite Chu Kai. Fang Qi rebuked Su Wei for meddling too much and, in a fit of anger, hurriedly tried to leave but sprained her ankle. Determined to leave, Fang Qi still managed to hail a taxi, but the taxi slid a long way before stopping. Su Wei then scooped Fang Qi up in his arms and placed her in the taxi. This action left Fang Qi stunned. After returning, Su Wei remained very upset, wondering why, in Fang Qi's eyes, he would always be seen as that immature little boy. Lin Siyu, in order to get closer to SAG and pursue her true love, Mo Lings, started working as a girl selling drinks in a bar. M. O. Lings channeled his frustration into his tennis training. His friend called for him to take a break and drink some water, asking, Why are you putting in so much effort? Who's it for this time? M. O. Lings replied, It's not for anyone. I'm just getting some exercise. His friend said, Who are you trying to fool? It's obvious you're troubled by love. It's for that office girl, isn't it? M. O. Lings said, She has a name. His friend responded, See, you won't even admit it, but you're already defending her. Lin Siya walked back and forth in the bar carrying beer. When she was harassed by a customer, she didn't back down and loudly argued with them. Wang Ji quickly stepped in to apologize to the customer and pulled her out of the bar, advising her to let go of her pride and not to act like a spoiled princess while working as a waitress. Su Kinju arrived at the office early in the morning and saw that the black umbrella was still open in the room. She couldn't help but remember the scene of M. O. Ling's picking up things for her in the rain and his words about regretting his previous decision. Su Kinju sighed deeply, hurriedly folded the umbrella, and quickly threw herself into work. Su Wei, with a distressed expression, told Xiao Pang that Fang Qi hadn't contacted him for three days. Xiao Pang asked, What did you do this time? Su Wei replied, I didn't do anything. Xiao Pang said, Well, that's the problem. Go do something for her quickly. The next morning, Su Wei arrived early at the place where Fang Qi had breakfast every day. He disguised himself as a waiter and delivered breakfast to her. When Fang Qi saw him, she scolded him, What's going on here? He said, As long as you don't forgive me, I'll follow you every day and keep you company. Fang Qi stood up and said, You're driving me crazy. I'm not eating anymore. I'm leaving. Su Wei grabbed her and said, Please eat. Don't starve yourself. I can leave if you want. Fang Qi sat back down and continued eating. Su Kinjo was discussing work with President Xi when she heard a commotion from her colleagues saying that the news was reporting Mo Ling's and President Luo had been in a car accident. Without a second thought, Su Kinja rushed out of the office and headed to the accident site. Seeing M. O. Ling's car overturned and deformed on the ground, she fearfully called him over and over, but couldn't get through. She crossed the police line and told the officers, I'm a family member. Su Kinja searched everywhere at the accident scene but still couldn't find M. O. Ling's. Anxiously, she called him again. At that moment, M. O. Ling's was in the ambulance, having just tended to the unconscious President Luo. He answered Su Kinjo's call, and upon hearing that he was unharmed, she felt relieved and lied, saying she was on her way home from work. She turned to leave. However, 
Mo Ling's heard the sound of the ambulance in the background and quickly jumped out of the vehicle. He saw Su Kinja standing in the pouring rain, walked over, and pulled her into a tight embrace, begging her not to avoid him anymore. Su Kinja hugged him tightly as well, struggling internally, but reason ultimately won over her emotions. She decided to leave. Mo Ling said, wait a moment. He returned with an umbrella, silently handed it to Su Kinju, and watched her walk away. Drenched through, Su Kinju went to find Fang Chi. Fang Chi noticed Su Kinju's emotional distress and believed that there was already a rift in Su Kinju's relationship with Fan Yongzi, which might be difficult to heal. Fang Chi hoped Su Kinju could move on from this relationship sooner and start anew. Mo Lings, weighed down by his thoughts, played the swinging balls at the bar. Sag remarked, such a good time, and you're just wasting it like this. He asked her, do you know the principle behind it? Sag replied, tell me, what principle? He said, each cue ball has its own trajectory, but they all influence each other, making the entire motion chaotic and unpredictable. The only way to achieve balance is to sever those connections. Sag asked him, so you mean you want to sever ties with her? Can you really do that? He replied, I have to do it. I need to get back to my original path and then wait for her to come to me on her own. Sag said, what you said tonight is a bit profound. Come on, let's have a drink to celebrate not understanding it. Fan Yongzi came to find Su Kinju and, holding her hand, said, you know, I was almost ready to call the police last night. I hope we don't lose contact for more than two hours. He also scolded her for going to Fang Chi's place without informing him. Su Kinja pulled her hand away and insisted on having a serious talk with him, to which Fan Yongzi agreed. That evening, they had dinner together, and Fan Yongzi wanted to order Su Kinju a truffle steak. Su Kinju, feeling exasperated, said, I don't like the taste of truffles. I've told you many times, but you still forget. Fan Yongzi admitted his mistake and said, I'll make it up to you by agreeing to one of your requests, just like before. Su Kinja felt they could never go back to how things were before. Fan Yongzi asked, Is there something wrong between us? Why can't we be like before? Su Kinja responded, That's the problem. Avoiding the issue is the issue. Fan Yongzi bluntly mentioned that Su Kinja had spent a day and night at an outdoor printing factory with M.O. Lings implying that something must have happened between them, similar to his own infidelity. He remained calm and said he didn't care, suggesting that they were even on such matters. Su Kinja was dissatisfied with Fan Yongzi's suspicion and his attitude. To her, it seemed like Fan Yongzi didn't care about her feelings at all and only wanted her to follow his plan. She felt that there was no love left between them and that Fan Yongzi no longer loved her, otherwise, he wouldn't be indifferent to her involvement with another man. She concluded that there was no reason to continue their relationship. Without heeding any objections, Su Kinjo left the restaurant, and Fan Yongzi watched her departing figure with a conflicted expression.